I'm gonna scroll up a little bit more and then I'm gonna go ahead and copy this function again. Oops, going the wrong way. So we'll copy all this function and then I'm gonna go to line 54 and then paste it down and then put a space here. Let's go ahead and change the name. So this is going to be update patient, update and save. So the update patient is gonna do the same thing the get patient is doing because we need to see if we can find the patient in order to update the patient. So the first part is gonna be the same. So all of this is gonna be the same. So we're gonna to check to see if the patient exists. If the patient doesn't exist, when we call the select patient to get one patient by passing in the ID, as you can see I'm doing here. So here on this line, when we're executing the query, if we can't find the patient, then we're going to send this response. We're just going to say the patient was not found, which is the first part of the function that we just worked on. So all of this is going to be the same. Now in the else statement, that's where we're going to try to update the patient. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to pass another logger. Actually, I'm just going to copy the one we have up here and then come down here and then paste it and then tab it in. So we're going to pass in the logger and then we're going to say updating patient. Okay, so we're updating the patient. And then we need to pass another the query. So I'm gonna copy this line again, come down here, and then paste it and then tab it in. And this time we're gonna use the update patient query. So I'm gonna delete all this and then I'm gonna say update underscore patient. And I'm gonna scroll up a little bit more so that this can be more in the middle. And this time what we need to update the patient is also the request body. So in addition to the request parameter, so the ID that they're gonna send us, we also need to get the request body with the new values to update the patient. So I'm gonna go to the request and then get the body. And this needs to be called inside of the object that values because we actually need this to be an array so i'm gonna come up here and then do object that values and then pass in the request body just like that so we're just copying everything that's gonna be inside of this array so remember uh, let me see if i can zoom in a little bit more now so when we do this right so when we do all this that I'm highlighting here, this is gonna give us an array and we need to merge the two arrays so that we can only have one array. So I'm using the spread operator, which is the three dots in the front, calling the object that values and then passing the request body. So essentially what we're doing is we're merging the two arrays into one array because the object that values and then you pass in some object into it, it's gonna extract everything and then put them inside of an array. And we only need to pass in one array inside of this call with the query. So I'm using the spread operator to make this happen. And then the second parameter we need to pass into this call is the ID. So let me zoom out a little bit now. So we're passing in the ID again, coming from the request as a parameter. So we're passing the request parameter here. So we're accessing the request params and then we're accessing the ID. And this also takes a callback function. They all take a callback function because that's how you're gonna execute the code whenever you get a response. So here, I'm gonna put the closing bracket. And then in here, what I wanna do is to check to see if I have any error. So I'm gonna do if and then check for errors. So I'm gonna say if I have no error, whenever I execute this, then we're going to execute some code in there. So here, what I want to say is you just send another response. So let's go up here on line 50 and just copy these two lines and then come down here and then paste. And I'm going to tap this in a little and tap this in as well and then save it. So if there is no error, we're going to send an OK. We're going to send a response. So we're going to say the patient was updated. So change this message to updated. And then as for the data, so the data that we need to pass in here, what I'm going to do is to just, uh, let's create an object on the fly. So I'm going to open and close curly braces. And then in here, uh, let's pass in the ID. So that's going to be the request that params that ID. And then we can pass in the request body. So we're going to say request that body. Okay, so we don't really need a store procedure for this because whatever information that they pass us, we're just going to return it to them. Otherwise, so we're going to go here and then put an else statement, open and close curly braces. And this time, we're going to send an error. So let me go down and delete these two lines, delete one of those braces, and then go in here. Actually, let's see if we can copy an error that we have here. So we have it not found here, so we can copy these two lines and then go down and then paste them here. And I'm going to scroll up a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna tap those in and tap this in as well and remove this space. And we need to close this. So we need to pass in curly braces, parenthesis, and then semicolon and then save all that. And we're gonna change this to a internal server error. So internal server error. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy this again and then make the changes here. And let's go over to the next end, paste that and then remove everything else. Go back, enter the server error, and then remove the not found. Save, and then for the error message, so let's go ahead and change that as well. 
I'm going to say error occurred. Just like that. And I also want to log this error. So if there's an error, we can see it on the console as well. So I'm going to say logger that error. And then we can pass in the error that message. And then save. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit more so that you guys can see the whole function. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and see if I can work you guys through it. So we're going to update the patient. And the first thing we're going to do is to log. Uh, let me zoom in, uh, zoom in some more. So we're going to log. So we're going to say, hey, we're fetching the patient because we need to see if the patient exists in a database before we try to update that patient. And then we're going to run this query. So this query is just going to find the patient in the database if the patient exists in a database. And we're just calling the select patient and then passing the ID, ID coming from the request parameter, as you can see here. On the next line, we're just checking to see if we get anything back from the database. So if we don't have anything back from the database, meaning we don't have that patient by that ID in the system, then we're just going to send them this response. We're just going to say that the patient was not found. Otherwise, we're going to go with the else statement. Now, the else statement is doing many different things. So the first thing is we're logging to say that we're updating the patient at this time. And then we go over the next line to actually send the query to the database. So we're passing in the update patient query. We're passing in the information. So we're passing in the request body as the first parameter because the request body is going to be like a JSON. And then we're just transforming it into an array. And then we're passing in the ID, which is the second parameter we need to pass into this update patient query. And then in the callback function, we check to see if we don't have any errors. So if we don't have any errors, we're going to send this response. We're going to say, okay, the patient was updated. And then we send the patient back to them with the updated information. Otherwise, which means we got an error and I'm going to delete this empty line then we're going to log the error. So we're going to call the logger, as you can see, I'm doing on 69 here. And then we're going to send this response to the user with an internal server error. Now you can send this error as a response as well as part of the message. So if we go down here, uh, let's go over here. Let's go over to the error. So this message that we're sending, we can actually get the message from the error itself. So the error coming from MySQL. So this error that we're trying to log here, so that one, and then pass it in as the error that we're sending to the front end or to the caller of the application. But that's not a very good idea because that's going to reveal sensitive information about the internals of your system. So you don't want to do that, which is why I chose to log this error and not send it to the front end because I don't want them to see what's going on. So you as the developer, you can go back in your log and then see what's going on if there's an issue. But you know, someone using your API, they don't need to know exactly what happened because then they will know what system you're using if they're smart enough.